Hello everyone, my name is Adam Saffron. I am a postdoctoral research fellow at the Johns Hopkins Center for Psychedelic and Consciousness Research, working with Matthew Johnson. So today we'll be talking about predictive coding models of psychedelics and the Rebus model and ways in which it might potentially be updated. So with predictive coding, you have this hierarchy of beliefs or predictions which are passed downwards and suppress this ascending stream of prediction errors from your sensory observations. And according to Rebus, these predictions are relaxed under psychedelics, allowing for more information to um, come from the environment and update your models and change your beliefs. And this would be potentially associated with the vividness of experience and people's capacity for change. Um, what I would suggest is that this model um, might only be accurate in certain regimes and that in terms of the effects of psychedelics and cortical microcircuitry, um, things might actually be the opposite. So uh, according to Rebus, um, excitation of the units, these uh, deep pyramidal neurons that encode your Bayesian beliefs, uh, layer five, when they get too excited, um, they fall out of sync with each other and this results in this uh, relaxation of your belief landscape. So what I would suggest is that this is potentially only true for very high levels of 5-HT2A agonism. For low to moderate levels, potentially physiological levels, we might expect the opposite to occur. Um, most straightforwardly, uh, increasing the gain on these signaling units that can shoot for distance and form these loops of the thalamus and form these uh, big synchronous ensembles that integrate information, um, that increasing the gain on these units would increase their ability to synchronize and form these beliefs, so strengthening. Uh, further, uh, within predictive coding uh, and with relation to 5 ht 2 a uh, those receptors are also found on the inhibitory interneurons of layers 2-3. And so that is the layer where you get the ascending stream of prediction errors. So not only might you have potentially strengthened beliefs, but these beliefs might further be shielded uh, from being contradicted from the environment. Taken together, this could be an account of uh, aspects of psychedelics. So um, is it, I'm not saying that uh, the Rebus model is wrong, but rather that the Rebus model is correct, but potentially only for um, very high doses. And so to try to illustrate this a little more clearly, uh, in this figure, you can see um, this hierarchy of neurons, and the uh, purple ones are your uh, deep uh, pyramidal neurons, the, and the ones that would encode your beliefs, and that's these red swaths or these synchronous complexes, which here would be uh, beta frequencies. And then these uh, white circles on top, these would be the superficial uh, neurons, layers two, three, that would communicate your prediction errors. So under a Rebus effect, you would expect these beliefs to be um, weakened, and as such, there would be less suppression of the ascending stream of prediction errors. Uh, for a Cebus effect, in contrast, um, you would see both a direct weakening of the prediction errors as well as a strengthening of the beliefs that would serve the function of suppressing them. And so these are two uh, very different patterns, uh, but which I would suggest um, operate, they're both correct, but they operate under different doses and potentially simultaneously at different levels of uh, the cortical hierarchy. Uh, there's some predictions here in terms of things like uh, susceptibility to visual illusions. Uh, a rebus effect would suggest that you should be uh, more resistant, that when your beliefs, you can think of an illusion as a kind of adversarial attack on your uh, perceptual models, um, the, 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 your, your, your priors not, not quite working. Um, misled by them. And so if you relax them, you might be less susceptible to these illusions. But uh, there doesn't seem to be great evidence for this. And uh, I would suggest that you might get different effects with different levels of 5 hg 2 a agonism. At low to moderate levels, I would expect to get more of a Cebus effect, most straightforwardly, a strengthening of your Bayesian beliefs. A, and so you would have uh, more susceptibility to the illusion. But the Rebus effect might only happen for very high levels of stimulation, and then, then you might see this uh, resistance to illusions. Uh, this is an empirical question that I hope to test. 
or hope someone does. Uh, in terms of Rebus, I think it might, don't have time to get into this now, but it might straightforwardly um, describe things like ketamine uh, at a level of predictive coding. Uh, further, uh, I mentioned that uh, you could potentially have within the brain, um, even for a given dose, it's not like some doses, uh, Rebus and the other is Cebus, that might be the case, of, but even within uh, one level of simulation, you might get both Rebus and Cebus effects happening in different ways. And uh, I'm not going to depict that, I'm not going to get into that now, but uh, in an upcoming paper, I will be describing this. Uh, further, I, I think we need to get uh, somewhat more precise about what we mean by beliefs and what, of what kind and how they're relaxed. In terms of our high level beliefs, well, what kind of high level beliefs? And so, towards the center, to actually describe the effects of psychedelics on cognition. Uh, I've been looking into the hippocampal system and the ways in which you might expect different types of uh, more rebus like or cebus like effects with uh, different levels of 5 HG 2A agonism. So, I think the, um, there are extensive implications for this. Uh, if the effects of um, psychedelics on cortical microcircuitry um, involve strengthening or weakening of different kinds in different places, this would potentially suggest very different use cases uh, with potentially extremely uh, high stakes. Uh, for instance, you might not want to give any dose of psychedelics to someone who's uh, potentially at risk for psychosis, uh, but it's possible that something like microdosing maybe could potentially be useful for something like autism. Uh, in terms of evidence, uh, I think it would be good to look at um, whether our priors are being strengthened or weakened. Uh, this would point to potentially fundamental aspects of mind. And so this issue of if there is uh, um, relaxation of your deep beliefs, in what ways, or strengthening, uh, this could potentially get at the uh, fundamental predictions that define us as the kind of beings we are. And in this way, uh, psychedelics would be very much like the like a microscope for understanding mind and consciousness, uh, potentially extremely informative. And uh, these issues might also be uh, extremely relevant for understanding how it is the change uh, usually takes place and how it might be able to take place. Uh, thank you so much for your time and attention. Uh, please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions and I look forward to talking with you now.